Over 90% of you watching this right now are almost certainly using settings that massively increase your latency, make your display look way worse, or God forbid both. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Now before we get into this, trust me, favorite this video right now, because believe me, you are going to want to come back to this time and time again, as this is my magnum opus of over a year of testing various different displays using both NVIDIA as well as AMD GPUs and a 1000 FPS camera, and what I found is definitely gonna shock you guys. It turns out when set up correctly, you can actually have far lower latency and a better image in motion, all while using less PC resources. How well it all has to do with sending the fastest, most up-to-date frame your PC can produce without tearing. And unfortunately, the default settings for GPUs and games don't allow this to happen. Now, this journey all started with me testing various FPS caps, and what I found was that yes, the old adage of VSync adding tremendous latency in games was actually true. However, at the time, I also found that G-Sync plus V-Sync in the NVIDIA control panel plus a reflex in game could actually lead to far less input delay on many games, and in fact, was overall better than using an external cap in the driver or Riva Tuner Statistic Server to set a global limit. Not only that, but you would also get a tear-free experience using these settings, and it could actually be even faster than no FPS cap, as when you're heavily GPU bound, this can actually increase latency. However, viewers then pointed out that external caps can have higher latency than in-game caps, so I went to investigate this claim now using an AMD GPU and found that they were actually correct. In-game caps led to far lower latency than any other method. However, I still hadn't had a chance to revisit this on NVIDIA GPUs to see if this is actually better than G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex, so I recently did just that. Now, for these tests, I ran four different configurations on a 138 Hz OLED monitor, G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Ultra Low Latency Mode, G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex, G-Sync plus V-Sync plus the 133 FPS cap that NVIDIA wants to set it to when you use Reflex, but of course without Reflex. And then finally, G-Sync plus a 120 FPS cap, as in my testing it turns out that VRR used by G-Sync and FreeSync monitors actually need one millisecond of time to fully work. What I mean by this is, for you to get zero perceivable tearing, you must add an additional millisecond of latency to give the display more time to process. This is done by first getting the latency of your monitor, which for me as an example would be to take 1000 milliseconds as there's a thousand milliseconds in a second divided by 138 FPS to get 7.246 milliseconds of total latency. You then add one millisecond to this number, which would give us 8.246 milliseconds of total latency and understand what that frame rate is, we simply take 1000 milliseconds again divided by this new latency, which gives us 121.27 FPS. However, I then round down to the nearest even number to give it a little bit of headroom, which means that actually the max frame rate we can run on a 138 hertz display is 120 FPS. Other common refresh rates would look like this, 240 hertz equals 192, 144 hertz equals 124, and 120 hertz equals just 106. When I was testing AMD GPUs, I found that if you don't do this, you will likely see slight tears at the bottom of your screen, which can make the display look a little weird and throw you off when you're playing a competitive game. However, on an NVIDIA GPU, I found that if you combine G-Sync plus V-Sync in the driver, you actually only need to add 0.3 milliseconds of latency for VRR to work correctly. So for example, 240 Hz equals 223, 144 hertz equals 138, and 120 hertz equals 115. So in theory, unless AMD can do the same thing, Nvidia may be able to deliver higher untorn frame rates, but that's only if the latency is still good. And is it? Well, let's find out. And first starting off with Overwatch 2, and right away I could tell something was going wrong with ultra low latency mode in the driver using the latest drivers, as 41 milliseconds of total system latency is actually up to roughly 46% higher than the best result, which was G-Sync plus V-Sync plus the 133 cap, as that came in at just 
28 milliseconds, and was shortly followed by the 120 FPS cap plus G Sync and no V Sync for that same 28 milliseconds. And then in third place was actually G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex at 32 milliseconds. Then moving on to Apex Legends, and here things were definitely a lot less weird. It seems like everything's working as intended, as G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex or Ultra Low Latency Mode both gave the same 26 milliseconds of total system latency. It was then followed up by the 120 FPS game cap plus G-Sync at 27 milliseconds. Then in last place at 28 milliseconds was G-Sync plus V-Sync plus the 133 cap. So basically these results are all the same, probably margin of error stuff here. But then moving on to Fortnite, and once again, ultra low latency mode is completely broken. 61 milliseconds is around roughly 2.35 times higher than the G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex result, which was also the best result at 26 milliseconds. The other two, basically the same, 27 and 28 milliseconds. And then finally, we have the finals. And once again, ultra low latency mode seems to be broken. And what's going on here is I found out that it's no longer capping the FPS below the max refresh rate. It's just letting it go to the max refresh rate, which seems to then be engaging VSync at all times, leading to terrible latency and a just overall bad experience. But in third place, we had G-Sync plus V-Sync plus the 133 cap. Then in second place, we had G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex. And then in first place, we had G-Sync, no V-Sync, and a 120 FPS in-game cap. And overall, taking a look at the final results here, yeah, ultra low latency mode definitely broken on the latest driver, or maybe it was intentional that they stopped capping the FPS, but either way you slice it, if you don't cap the FPS with ultra low latency mode, you're gonna get really, really high latency. I mean, it is 61% higher than the best result. Now, the second worst result was G-Sync plus V-Sync plus the 133 cap, but I say second worst, realistically, it's near margin of error stuff to the other two results. G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex was technically one millisecond faster, and then G-Sync plus the 120 FPS in-game cap was technically the fastest at just two milliseconds faster than the reflex results. So honestly, guys, overall, it seems like these three options are gonna give you pretty much the same amount of latency. So what's the conclusion here? And first of all, do not use ultra low latency mode. It just seems to be really weird and I don't wanna tell people to use something that they're gonna have to be fiddling with a lot to make it work correctly. Now, the second thing is please always use VRR. Sure, you can technically get a lower latency experience if you far exceed your maximum refresh rate and at really high frame rates, the tearing isn't that noticeable, but you're still getting tearing and if you're GPU bound, your latency is actually gonna be worse as I've proved in the past. So unless you can just cap 1000 FPS at all times and have your GPU at like 50%, it just doesn't make sense for the vast, vast majority of gamers. And then three, G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex or G-Sync plus V-Sync plus an in-game FPS cap, 0.3 milliseconds below your max refresh rate for non-Reflex supported games is the best mix of image quality and low latency. You can get a cleaner image in motion with no tearing at the same or lower latency than uncapped FPS while needing less performance because you don't need to be driving 500 FPS and you could end up getting the same latency at, you know, like 138 FPS because you're no longer GPU bound, which means that, yeah, you don't necessarily need to buy more expensive GPUs unless you want your image to look better with a higher resolution or higher settings. And then finally, for a low latency tear-free experience on AMD, capping your FPS in game one millisecond below the max refresh rate rounded down to the nearest even number is the absolute best way to play your games consistently. However, it may be possible to do free sync plus V-Sync in the control panel like Nvidia, and I will investigate this in a future video. Definitely let me know in the comments below if this is a possible combination, but hopefully that helped you guys out. Again, definitely recommend favoriting this one because there is a lot of hours of work that went into this to finally get down to what the best settings are. And yeah, this is some shocking stuff. If you set it up correctly, you're gonna have a cleaner image in motion, lower latency overall. And now we know that, you know what? Nvidia might actually be able to technically give you higher untorn frame rates. I'll have to look into that a little bit more, but if that's the case, that's actually a pretty big deal. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.